In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the digitizer on an iPad 4th generation. The tools you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver, a spudger, six guitar picks, and a Sesmo. These are all included in the kit along with a replacement digitizer and a replacement bezel. Some other tools you're going to need is a way to heat the glass to remove it, which we use a hot air gun which can be purchased at almost any hardware store. Uh, word of caution on this is this puts out up to a thousand degrees of hot air. If you're working on an iPad that has opens like this one here where a piece of the glass mason, you want to be cautious that you don't heat inside that area. Any heat that hits the LCD will render it uh, damaged and it'll have to be replaced. A few other tools you may want to consider is a pair of tweezers a brush such as this one here is a ESD safe nylon brush or you can use a clean cosmetic brush or even a natural hair paint brush and this is used for when you start removing the glass parts of the glass will land on the LCD and you want to be able to gently brush it off without scratching the display. I highly recommend a pair of safety goggles because of the fact this is glass and when we start removing it, it will fracture and break and there is a risk of glass flying up and hitting you in the face. Another item we sell is a lens pen sidekick. This device is used for cleaning the display and the digitizer. As you can see here, it does an incredible job. If you get any fingerprints or anything on the display, it will remove them without harming the display. And another item is a hobby knife with a number 17 flat blade when you get stubborn areas that you're having a hard time getting the glass off of. Again, those are optional tools that will make the replacement go a lot easier. One of the first things we want to do is make sure that everything on this iPad functions. Make sure that your touchscreen works, your front and rear camera and you want to record a, a video to make sure that your microphone's working and then play back the video to make sure your speaker is working. Also make sure you have a good Wi-Fi signal or your normal signal depending on your situation. You want to make sure that the volume up, volume down, and mute works. If you have a smart cover, you want to make sure the mag sense, the smart cover sensor works also. In this case, I'm just using a magnet waving it over and you see the screen goes to sleep and wake up which tells me the smart cover sensor is functioning. Now on the iPad 4th generation the home button is connected to a flex cable which runs across the digitizer and connects to the logic board. Now this cable is attached to the glass so when we're opening this we want to make sure that we don't cause any problems or short that cable even though the new digitizer comes with a brand new cable uh, with with having power here if you accidentally cut that cable it could short out some circuitry so those are a few things that you need to be aware of so now that we're ready to go ahead and get started on this we want to make sure that we power the device down by pressing a hole in the power button and sliding to turn off. All right, so one of the first things to do is I like to gently heat up the aluminum frame because it'll hold the heat a lot longer and it'll actually make removing the glass easier. Uh, you just want to make sure that when using the heat is you don't want to burn any of the plastic like at the volume up, volume down, mute, uh, power, headphone jack, camera, or the Apple logo. So I'll just gently run it around until the, the back of it is kind of warm. Uh, usually about five, six minutes worth just to slowly heat it up. And then I'll go ahead and flip it over and start heating the glass. So as you're heating this, you just want to go enough to where your fingers can touch the glass but won't burn your fingers. And again, if you have any open areas where the LCD can be potentially exposed, you want to avoid those areas. So go through and heat that up. And one thing is with your 
hot air gun, since this can put up to a thousand degrees of heat, you don't want to point this toward yourself or anything that can be uh, damaged or burned from the heat. So once I go, I'm going to go ahead and take the ice Esmo and get it between the plastic bezel and the glass, just like that to where it slides in. And I'm going to go all the way around this here. Now, as you start doing this, you may get pieces of glass that fall off, which is fine. You can just slowly dig those out. And if it starts getting more difficult, you add more heat. Now the Isesmo, you don't want to go in too far because you can see you'll hit the display in which you could scratch it. So you want to only go in as far as the colored border around the glass. And this one's pretty badly broken up, so it's going to take a long time. Uh, by slowly adding heat, removing let's say, little beast pieces of glass, and then you're going to constantly keep heating it. As you see, I'm holding this at an angle to where no hot air is going to go inside the device, and I'm only heating the glass itself. Now, areas like this where there's a lot of little chunks, that's where the hobby knife comes in handy, because it can go through and really really slice this up makes it uh, removing it a lot easier so you get in there get an area I can put in the nylon spudger and kind of run that up breaking the glass free and get to another area where we have some chunks here same thing I can put in that nylon spudger start getting that broken free. So areas that tend to stay together, you know, if you want to prevent the glass from re-sticking to the frame, uh, such as this area here, I'm going to go ahead and insert a guitar pick, which kind of acts as almost a little spacer. Okay, now that we have most of the right side here completely undone, you see most of it's lifting up. I can come through and keep working across. Pulling off little pieces of glass at a time. Like I said, this is a very slow process because you don't want to damage anything while you're in here. So I'm going to work across the top now. And this is where the uh, hobby knife really comes in handy, especially the one that's this badly broken. Is I can keep slowly removing the glass. You see using the hobby knife here, just very gently brushing it across, picking up that glass. So if it starts getting difficult, you just add more heat. So now I've got most of the top here cleared up. I'm going to start working at the bottom edge. I like to pick up the uh, glass and throw it away as I go along so that I don't have glass sitting everywhere. the bottom edge same thing I'm going to work from the right over to the left coming through so 
see the screen's really starting to lift up now. Okay, like I said, I mean, you see glass here is flying around. So that's why eye protection is, is highly recommended. So I'm going to go ahead and continue heating along the bottom. Now, as I go through, I'm just going to just slowly start lifting my glass here. Um, so using the nylon spudger, I can get in here and start popping up some of this glass and almost opening it like a book. Uh, try to get as high as I can here. Now as again right along here is the home button flex cable. So you don't you want to try to keep this up as one piece as much as possible. You see there's the cable getting exposed. So I can keep running in here. And again, if it starts fighting you, just add a little bit more heat. So once I have pretty much most of this exposed, I can start lifting and heating along this edge as I lift. And it will slowly just open right up, just like that. Now the big thing you want to you don't want to cut any of these cables. Try to keep them intact as much as possible. But we want to be able to get the LCD out of here. So I'm just going to very gently come in and remove the remaining glass that I can see here uh, so that I have enough room along the sides to get the LCD out. Now you do not want to touch the LCD with your fingers at all. At this point, we're going to go ahead and put on the pair of nitro gloves that were included in your kit. And until we get the LCD back in, we'll continue wearing these gloves. Okay, so the LCD itself has four screws, one in every corner. We'll go ahead and remove those screws and set them aside so they don't get lost. All four screws are the same size, so the order in which you take them out really doesn't matter. <clears throat> and. Uh, don't let your screwdriver slip and, and hit the LCD because that will put a nice scratch across the LCD. So once this is open, we're going to lift out the LCD. Now if this is a cellular model, you're also going to have antennas that are filled in these upper areas which will be attached to the glass. So on those, you want to be cautious not to rip the antennas up. So this is a Wi-Fi only model. I can go ahead and very gently lift my LCD up. As you can see, it's held in with a cable here. So what I'll do is I'll get a, a tissue or use the microfiber cloth that was included and lay it across the front of the iPad here. This way when we go to Remove the LCD, you won't have to worry about scratching the LCD or transferring any of the uh, adhesive that's left on the frame onto the screen. So what we're going to do is very gently roll the LCD over to expose the cable and the connection. So now the logic board here is attached to the battery with the single screw. And what we want to do is separate the logic board from the battery before we remove any cables because even though this is powered down your battery still has 
an electronic charge going through there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and remove the screw here at the battery. And then across the logic board, we're going to remove this screw also. Now these screws are different heights. Uh, the one in the, in the battery is a much longer screw where this is a short screw. Now I've taken and I modified one of my guitar picks to create a small three millimeter opening which I can slide in between the battery and the logic board. And this will prevent the logic board from touching the battery itself and uh, possibly causing d damage. Whatever you use here, make sure it's non-conductive. Uh, you could use a business card, a uh, guitar pick, or something of that nature. So as you can see here, the LCD has, the cable has a sticker that sits on top of this flexible printed circuit. So what we're going to do is go ahead and remove that sticker by gently peeling it off. I'm using a pair of tweezers. Once that sticker's off, I just attach it to the battery cover here just so I don't lose that. Now I want to disconnect the LCD flex cable from this connector. So I'm going to use the flat end of the nylon spudger, set it here, and just very gently rock it down, and this door right here will open. Once that's done, then I can slide it underneath the flex cable and just slide that right out of the logic board take my LCD and place it in a safe place so that it's not touched. If you notice, I'm still wearing my gloves so I don't have to worry about getting any fingerprints on the display itself. Now the digitizer down here also has the same connector as LCD but there's two of them here in a piece of tape keeping the cable in. So we're going to perform the same thing is we're going to peel off this tape and I'll take the tape and just stick it right here on this shield of the logic board take the flat end of my nylon spudger again using the shield as a leverage come in here and just very gently pop that door up and then the second one both those doors are open it's free to go but since this is an iPad fourth generation we also have the home button flex cable which is attached to the logic board down here at the bottom so we're gonna have to remove this cable as well so we'll go ahead and peel up this tape which covers that connection and set it here on the logic board so it doesn't get lost. You can see this has a smaller version of, the, of that same type of door for the home button flex cable. The same thing is we're going to insert the flat end of the spudger and carefully lift that door and then pull the home button flex out. And if you notice, the cable itself it almost seems like it's backwards, but that's the way it's installed. Okay, so now that the home button flex cable is disconnected from the logic board, we're going to go ahead and remove the entire digitizer assembly. So I'll take my nylon spudger again, the flat end, slide it underneath the cable because it has adhesive holding it to the frame. To release it, grab the cable and slide outward. And then we'll go ahead and Pull this up, it has another piece of adhesive down here at the corner, and then we could take that entire assembly, there. So now that it's off, go ahead and set this in a safe location so that it can be recycled. So our next step is going to be to remove the remainder of the glass and adhesive around the frame as well as pull the plastic bezel off. Okay, now that 
the glass and the LCD is off, we're going to go ahead and start cleaning up the frame. Uh, so if there's any large chunks of glass still remaining, go ahead and pull those off. Once we got all the glass out, let's go ahead and remove the plastic bezel that surrounds the frame. Using the Isesmo, you can get underneath it and just lift it off and peel it off. And then go ahead and dispose of that. <clears throat> Using either the Isesmo or the hobby knife, go through and start scraping off any large chunks of adhesive remaining. I'm going to go ahead and inspect my frame, see if there's any dents or dings, uh, especially down in the corners uh, because then the new LCD won't sit. Uh, this one has got a nice little ding to it. As you can see, it's flattened out. Uh, one way to get rid of that is by uh, taking a socket that fits within the radius and a little hammer and just kind of tap it down or you could just get a file and file off that corner um, just so that you could sit the LCD and the digitizer in place with no issues. So we've got a few more pieces of adhesive here. We're gonna go ahead and remove. If you're using the knife, you wanna be careful. You don't want it to slip. Uh, if, if it punctures a battery, it can damage the battery or any of the cables. So use it with caution. Okay, included with your kit, you have a packet called uh, PDI Adhesive Tape Removal Pad. Now this is uh, mainly used in the medical community to remove residue of tapes left on the skin, um, but it, it's very safe and it works very well for removing any remaining adhesive. What I'll do is I'll get a, a tissue or something, take the pad out, and squeeze any uh, additional fluid so that my pad isn't completely soaked. Then I'll fold my pad into quarters, and then I will rub this fluid on any remaining adhesive. I, once you put it on here, you'll go completely around the frame at least two times. This way you make sure that you get every bit of adhesive uh, coated. And then you're going to wait two to three minutes and start uh, scraping off any remaining adhesive left over. And this will make the cleanup a lot easier because the cleaner your frame is, the better your new digitizer is going to re-stick to the aluminum. So I'll give that a few minutes. Now I'll take the flat end of the nylon spudger and kind of start pushing the adhesive around. You see it, it comes off pretty easy. Just wipe it onto a tissue. If you get a stubborn area, uh, you can push it with the Isesmo or a hobby knife. I'm not putting forth a lot of effort into this. The adhesive comes off relatively easy with the uh, adhesive tape removal pad. Now the PDI uh, fluid on the tape is kind of an oil base, uh, so you don't want to touch the inside or you transfer those oils. But it's easily cleaned up with the uh, alcohol pads, which are also included in the kit. But again, I'll just keep going around removing as much of the adhesive as possible and like I said if there's any stubborn areas you could use the hobby knife to kind of get those areas up <clears throat> once I'm satisfied that the amount of adhesive is removed I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, alcohol pads and start 
cleaning the frame. Uh, there's two of them included in your kit. So I'll take one here and do an initial wipe down. Just go through and just pick up any of the uh, chemical left behind from the adhesive pad and it will also help remove any remaining adhesive that will be laying behind. Make sure you get it down inside the channel where the plastic bezel sits. Uh, a lot of times there will be a lot of dirt and debris from just everyday usage of the iPad and it kind of cleans that out and gives it a nice uh, new look. Okay, once I've gone through and picked up as much adhesive as possible, I'll give it one more wipe down with the second alcohol pad to make sure that all that uh, oil-based stuff is removed and then I have a nice clean surface for clean reattaching. And one thing I'll warn you, if, if you have any really bad dents or dings in the sidewall frame uh, you want to be cautious because rubbing across this they can get pretty sharp and then will slice through your glove and into your skin um, which is why I fold these pads over uh, to kind of protect my fingers and you don't want to any, use any liquid chemicals because uh, if any liquid spills in here uh, it could damage the electronic components you know, some people use acetone, uh, which is actually not very good. Uh, it puts off a lot of vapor and fumes, uh, which, when used indoors, could, could become combustible. So, you want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated space. Okay, now that I'm satisfied that all my old adhesive is removed, then we're going to go ahead and take our new digitizer assembly and the bezel and start putting this iPod back together again. Okay, so including your kit is a new digitizer with home button flex cable and a replacement bezel and bezel adhesive. If you look at the bezel, you'll have a side with the channel that the glass would sit into and if you turn it over, it'll have a flat edge. Now there's two kinds of bezel adhesive that are currently in our kits. Uh, this kind here, which is a wider strip, actually rests on the bottom flat edge of the bezel. If you have the really skinny ones, they actually will sit in the channel of the iPad itself. Uh, you just place it in the channel and then you would set the bezel down and press it in. On this one here, we'll go ahead and attach the new adhesive to the plastic bezel. If you look, this is the bottom section. You have your Wi-Fi and your home button area. And if you look at the adhesive, you'll see an area that has that same trim out here. So this piece will be used at the bottom. We'll go ahead and attach this. Start by lining up the cut area. And then press it flat against the bezel. Just like that. Come around this edge has no trims, it's a long one. So I'll use the one with long side with no cutouts. So I'll start at the very end, work my way down, next we'll do the top edge which is the last shorter piece, it's got the cutout here for there and this cut out here which matches here same thing I'll start applying this and then 
to smooth it out as I come across. And the final piece of adhesive. So now my adhesive is applied to the bezel, I'll go ahead and peel off the backing. Which I'm using tweezers to do. Um, but you can also use the end of the Isesmo to gently nudge that up and then grab it. So now that all the backings peel off the adhesive, we're going to press this back into the iPad frame itself. You're going to start by lining up the bottom edge, which has the two center cutouts here. Place the corners within the corners, all the way around, just like so. And then I use the flat end of the nylon spudger at an angle to actually press the bezel up into the channel. The channel is kind of shaped like this and your plastic bezel is going to get pressed inside there. So I'll hold the corner and just very gently lay this down pressing it under the frame and it will drop within that channel. You're going to do this all the way around the iPod, iPad itself. And uh, a lot of times I'll put my other finger on the other end just to keep that bezel from popping up over that corner and it helps drop it right down into place. Run through one last time. Make sure that the bezel is even here with the frame. Okay, now the plastic bezel is set into place, we could begin attaching the digitizer. Okay, now that we've taken the digitizer out of the packaging, one of the first things we want to do is inspect the cables. Make sure that there's no rips or tears anywhere around this. And if you see a little extra nub sitting on the cable, just go ahead and peel that little guy off. The same thing with the home button flex cable. You want to make sure that it's attached to the home button bracket. Comes across in that there's no rips or tears within this cable. So, what we're going to do is go ahead and start off by attaching the digitizer back to the logic board. You can take the cable and you're going to gently insert the end in. Now these cables are pretty flexible as you can see here. And then you want to just scoot them in. And give them a nice nudge. And you'll see the white line will almost disappear within the connectors. 
So let's go ahead and close these doors just by pushing your finger across that and pushing them down and that will lock the cable into place. Now we're going to go ahead and push the flex cable down into the frame. Uh, if there's any adhesive backing back here, just go ahead and peel it off so that will re-stick to the frame. And same with the bottom corner here. Go ahead and remove the adhesive backing. We'll go ahead and smooth this down inside the frame. And it's best if you keep the digitizer sitting up on the ledge of the iPad. And then the cable will actually tuck ever so nicely down inside the frame here. So now we're going to attach the home button flex cable to the logic board. So the way this goes in is it's almost inverted. So you want to make sure that the copper pins of the cable are facing upward. And take that and slide it into the connector here. Now this is a tight spot and it can be kind of a pain to do. Uh, it's a little bit easier with tweezers. So when that slides in, and then go ahead and close the door just by running your finger across there. So now the door should be flat with the rest of the connector. Okay, now that we have the digitizer and the home button flex attached to the logic board, let's go ahead and put the tape back over the digitizer connectors. Then we'll take the other one for the home button flex cable and set that one into place also. Now before you put in the LCD you want to make sure that the home button flex cable, the curled end, is actually below the frame here. See there. Now I'm going to take a a tissue or the microfiber cloth that came within your kit and lay it across the bottom of the iPad just to prevent anything from sticking or scratching the display. So I'm going to go ahead and set the display down, take my cable, fold it over, slide it into the LCD connector, and you should see the white line on the cable right here it will almost disappear when it's fully inserted and then go ahead and close the door so once the door is down it's nice and locked go ahead and place the tape back over the cable and connector just like so and then whatever we put to separate the battery from the logic board we'll go ahead and pull that out next we'll put those screws back in so the shorter screw goes over here with the logic board. The longer screw passes through the battery connector. Don't over tighten these because they will strip in the alloy frame. And then we'll go ahead Pick the LCD up and lay it down in place. You want to make sure that the bottom corner here goes on the inside and under the home button flex cable. And then push the LCD into place. Then go ahead and insert your four screws for the LCD. Hold it into the frame.
Okay, now that the LCD is back into place, I'm going to use my uh, ESC Safe brush here or the, whatever you're using that's very soft and gentle and just brush anything that may have landed on there, pieces of glass, dust, or dirt. And then I'm going to just set the digitizer on here for the time being. Turn the iPad on to make sure that everything still functions. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let the iPad boot back up to the dash. And while it's doing that, I'm just going to make sure that my glass is going to sit within the frame just fine. And I'm not forcing it down, I'm just gently testing it and make sure that none of my corners are so badly damaged that the glass isn't going to sit. So once it's turned on, we'll go ahead and the first thing we want to do is test the digitizer. And one easy way of doing that is to go ahead and press and hold a icon until it jiggles. And then we will take that icon and move it all over the screen. If the icon drops out of your finger, that could indicate a problem with possible the cable's not sitting in place. So now I'm satisfied that it moves. I'm going to press the home button, make sure that it works. I'm again going to test my volume up, my volume down, my mute switch. We know the power works because it turned on. Test my rear and front facing camera, record a video and play it back to test the loudspeaker and the microphone. Once I'm satisfied that everything is functioning, I'll go ahead and power it back down so we can get it closed up. So now we're ready to go ahead and clean it up. So I'll go ahead and open the iPad back up. And again, I'm keeping the digitizer up on the ledge so that I don't pull this cable out. Go ahead and give the LCD one final brush. Make sure it's nice and clean. No dust, dirt, or glass fragments. Take my lens pen sidekick. Give the LCD a one final cleaning. Make sure there's no smudges or marks, anything like that. Um, in the event that you accidentally got some uh, adhesive on the glass when you're playing with it, uh, you can take a very soft tissue or the microfiber cloth and use a mixture of 50-50 alcohol and distilled water and very gently rub out the adhesive and then go back with the lens pen sidekick and clean the glass. So we're going to go ahead and peel off the adhesive backing from the digitizer. Out this last final piece. Now when you get down here toward where the digitizer is, you just give this a little pull and it'll slide right out without uh, tearing the digitizer. Now you want to make sure that the home button flex cable has not stuck to the adhesive and that the digitizer is also not stuck to the adhesive. So the last thing we want to do is pull off the clear piece here that covers the inside of the digitizer and in the event the little pull tab comes off you can gently get down there and find a corner and peel that up. The biggest thing is you don't want to scratch or damage the digitizer itself. You want to make sure you wear gloves and never touch the inside of the digitizer with your fingers.
because it will leave a fingerprint and they're very difficult to remove. So now I've got that off. I'm going to go ahead and close this down by taking it and setting the right edge in first. And I'm going to keep the left edge kind of sitting up so that I can look in there and make sure that the cables are dropping in the right place. So your digitizer cable should be nice and straight, just like here. Uh, if it's stuck to the adhesive on the outside, you can take your spudger and very carefully peel that off. And it's important that it's like this because you want this cable to drop between the frame and the display. So when you go to close it, you're just going to gently press it down until it drops in, just like that. Then I'm going to run my fingers along the side, make sure that it pops into the bezel. Like such. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the unit on so I can give it one final test uh, before I close it down completely. So go ahead and take off my glove since it's closed up. Go ahead and test my digitizer. Again, hold an icon till they get all jiggly and take it and move it all over making sure the icon does not drop if it does drop that could indicate a problem with the digitizer a poor connection or a tear in the cable make sure that it goes to a second page and then back to the original page test my home button double tap it should do that make sure I still have perfect Wi-Fi signal Make sure my volume up, volume down, and mute work. We know the power works because the unit turned on. I also want to test my MagSafe sensor for the, the smart cover. I'm taking a magnet over that sensor, and it should wake it and sleep it. Uh, you can also do it with the, the screwdriver occasionally. There we go because of the fact that the magnets are magnetic it'll trigger that. I'm going to test my front and rear camera and again record another video that way I could play it back and test the loudspeaker and that will tell me that the microphone itself is working and go ahead and power it down so we can get this closed up. Now the adhesive around here best holds when the frame is heated to about a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit uh, there's several ways to apply pressure to keep this closed. Uh, one way to do it is if you take the envelope that your digitizer came in after you've heated the glass to about 100 degrees and lay it down and then stack about 10 to 15 pounds of books and leave it there usually overnight or at least a couple of hours. You can use the pad or a towel. The reason why you don't want to lay itself flat down is because the plastic bezel surrounding it actually sits up slightly higher than the glass so the only thing you'd be putting weight on is the bezel surrounding the iPad. Now one of our technicians had invented a kit that we call the iPad Jig and this is great for people who are doing multiple iPad repairs. So we'll go ahead and set it down here in the base take our hot air gun and go ahead and heat the glass up to about 100 degrees on the outside edges only. And then you'll take the top cover, set it down and use in these elevator bolts and wing nuts. Just like that. There's 10 of them all the way around. And that'll hold it together and we'll let it sit for a minimum of four hours. And after that, you're digitizer should be sucked to the frame just fine.